Now, typically, the remedy for situations like this is a lot of manipulation. A lot of make sure, be careful, watch out. So we've got a hole that's very close and what's happening is you're already feeling the pressure that you got to make that putt or else, or else you'll look, you know, not skilled enough to be a golfer, whatever that is. So the first thing we need to do is get you in balance and then put your arm putter unit in balance under your shoulders. So you notice when I swing the putter back and through without stopping, and I'm just letting the weight of my arms swing from my shoulder sockets down, gravity will settle me. If you don't know what that feels like, many of you I see are just grabbing this putter and placing it, and you feel the need to manipulate and be in control. That's the last thing you want to do. So let's take that sledge, let's sledgehammer now. So you're going to let it fall in front of you. So I'm just bending forward enough that the sledgehammer can swing in front of my feet. And I'm just going to start swinging it back and through. So notice how my body naturally wants to move. If I don't move my body, ugh, ugh, the weight of the sledgehammer is already torquing on my rib cage and both my arms are hitting my rib cage in each direction. So when you bring your hands together to take your grip, your armpits are right up against your rib cage and this collision is imminent. So how do we get this collision to be bypassed? Well, you get the body out of the way. Your rib cage and your pelvis sit on top of your hips. Your, your hips are your femur, your femur is half your knee. So when I swing this back and through without stopping, no, look at my knees. If my left arm not hit me, the right arm doesn't hit me. Left arm doesn't hit, right arm doesn't hit. Out of the way, out of the way. So notice there's quite the rotation there with the lower body, which is really against what you've heard about. Don't move the lower body. Got to be very stable. Don't, you know, that's the worst thing possible for this machine. If you look at the anatomy of the human body, everything moves together. If I want to snap a little punch in that direction, I can't go like this. Look, my, I just have a peck full of bicep right now. So if I want to go over there, the brain's going to go to the ground, use the ground to get my body out of the way and look at that. So in order for me to extend the slightest of punches that way, my body has to turn 180 degrees. So it's snap that way, snap that way. Well, I bring my hands together to take my grip in front of me. My hands are handcuffed. So don't let it hit me. Let it pass. Let it pass. See that? Look at how free that is. Now watch from this angle. Let it swing. Let it swing. So notice it's not coming behind me. If it comes behind me, I'm going to take out an ankle. So it stays in front of me the whole time. Now everything's just, look at how it's tracking that arc in front of me. And look at how accurate that arc is. So if I'm chipping, you'll see a lot of this. Beautiful practice swings. Look at how my arm wedge unit is passing in the same place every time. But now if I go to the ball like this, no longer in balance. Now everything's gonna to fall to the inside. If I get too close, it's gonna to pop to the outside. So I gotta really pay attention to where the arm club unit wants to pass, set it down there and then bring it in. Now from there, if I just let momentum go, see how absolutely spot on that was. If I get into my posture, I got my 58 degree now. I swing back and through without stopping. See how it wants to track. If I take it too far inside, now it's falling that way. I want to feel like my arm club unit is going to fall in the direction of my target. 
So if I, if I want to fall parallel to the mat, that's two outside. That's two inside. That feels like it wants to fall parallel to the mat. And then look at what happens to my shot. See how my shot is 0.4 feet to the right. That's pretty accurate. Right? That probably could have lipped out of the cup. So depending on the break, of course. So now if I want to land the ball on that tee, we're talking about super short chips. Well, imagine that ball is a dandelion in disguise and I'm going to use the weight of my arms and club like the sledgehammer to just cut through the stem very gently. Cutting through means there's no deceleration. So here it is. Bring that in, feel the weight, let momentum fall through the stem. Now we have, look at where that landed. I have one yard carry, two yards total, 0.1 feet to the right. That's in the hole. So you see how accurate and how soft when we use momentum. If I use manipulation, I cancel the movement of my legs and my hips. If I want to clean the grooves of my club, my brain's going to freeze my body so I can make these fine manipulations. You're a dentist over a patient. You're a statue. You're an architect in front of your table or an artist. You're a statue. So if you're a lumberjack, that's a different story. I got my ax. I'm going to heave my ax. Notice how I'm getting out of the way of this heavy object. So if I'm using the weight of my arms and club, the same way I would use the sledgehammer. And this is why using the sledgehammer is so key is because it forces you to feel extreme weight. So now that you got this weight, you want to feel that you're, wow, this feels really good. It feels like my arms are just tracking from the shoulder sockets down around my sternal notch out of the way. And I feel immediate need to get out of the way of this heavy object. If I don't move my hips, ugh, this feels like, oh, my rib cage is so tense and so stiff and I'm already popping a rib. So it's the same thing when you're using a putter in a very short putt, you're using the weight of your arms and putter to roll the ball into the hole. You're not using manipulation. That's why they took this away huh? so that you can't manipulate the putter and use it as a crutch. You're going to use momentum in order for you to find that arc. So, Here's where the putter wants to hang. Bring that in. Do a backswing and stop. Notice how it just wants to go along that line when it's in balance under my shoulders. So now if I let it go, there's my tee. There's the ball rolling into the hole and it had nothing to do with me. I was just a witness letting the weight of my arms and putter ride its own arc without manipulation, without interference. When there's no interference, there's no yips. So if you're getting ready to manipulate and make sure, you're getting set to yip, <laughs> okay? And that's not what we're designed to do because if you're getting ready to steer and you're trying to repeat the same stroke over and over again, you're gonna, you're gonna get messed up mentally because your brain seeks the path of least resistance. Every time you make a putt, there's a feedback loop that comes into the brain that changes your brain forever. Then the brain uses that information to help you with the next putt. But if you force the brain to repeat a certain pattern, you take its ability to um, adapt away. And if this machine is removed from adaptation, its ability to survive is severely compromised and the brain will rebel with a focal dystonia and cause you a tremor. So you stop and back the heck off before something bad happens. 
See where we're going? And they did this study. They put a PET scan on, you know, they put a pro and an amateur doing a one foot putt over and over again. They put a PET scan on their heads to see what parts of the brain were lighting up when they were performing this task. And the same parts of the brain in both individuals were lighting up. But across the board, out of 100 putts that they made, they never missed one, it's a tap in. Every brain scan was slightly different, one from the next, and never repeated. What does that tell you? Adaptation machine, not a repetition machine. So don't try to force the brain into repeating. It will rebel. Use a sledgehammer. Let momentum be your guide and just respond to momentum and the picture. You say, well, that putt's got to go in that way. It's got to enter here. And I'm going to let momentum put it in. And you're just a witness reacting to a picture. Very, very different. That's galaxies apart. That's where you want to spend your time. And then by all means, the yips will go away. Now some easy tips, go cross-handed, go, uh, you know, claw, go left-handed putting. Just shake it up for your brain. So if you give it the, the same grip, same posture, same everything, you're asking your brain to go back to its original ways of making sure. Whereas if you change it up and you say, hey, we're going to use momentum instead, then you're going to be presenting yourself with the right options and your brain will easily be able to adapt to that because that's what it was designed to do. Okay. Get cracking on that. We'll see you next week.